drought. But the discovery of thousands of pulverized and injured bones suggested something much more sinister. There were killers patrolling its shores. Paleontologists must work to identify who may have been responsible for the carnage found at this site. To find the answer, they used the same techniques as modern crime scene investigators. When we look at a dinosaur site, of course, this is representing something that died 65, 75, 100 million years ago. And uh, a lot of times your clues are cold, but really we reconstruct it the same way a forensic scientist would go in and, and reconstruct a uh, mystery surrounding a murder case. The investigation continued. Then, a third species emerged from the Jurassic lake bed. And this one was a predator. It was one of the rarest killers. Ceratosaurus. Its name means horned lizard, not for the hornless above its eyes, but rather for the blade-like appendage on its nose. It's the only predatory dinosaur known to have this distinctive feature. Those horns, they're not for attack, they're for display. And if you're gonna have a display structure, that means at least on occasion, you get together and you show off to each other, say, look at me, I've got the biggest horn. So at least some of the time, these guys got together in groups. The Ceratosaurus stood 13 feet tall, measured 20 feet in length, and weighed 3,000 pounds. That made it a mid-sized predator in the late Jurassic. Ceratosaurus may not have been large, but its oversized teeth meant that they worked much like a meat slicer. He's got the most wicked looking teeth of any predator that ever walked the earth. He's got two different kinds of teeth. His upper teeth are immensely long and very blade-like, while his bottom teeth are a little stubbier and a little more powerful. What that tells me is when he grabs you, he uses the muscle in his jaws to push those lower stubby teeth into you. They're the anchor. Now he brings down the meat slicer and cuts a chunk of you out. With a bite like that, Ceratosaurus could compensate for two glaring weaknesses. He wasn't especially fast, and his claws weren't large or strong compared to other predators. Ceratosaurus's best hope would be to get in there, take a big chunk of meat out, and get back. It would not have been good for clamping onto something, for hanging in there in close combat. Just get in there, strike, and get away as soon as possible. Its skeletal design is sort of weak, so it's not really built for full combat. It's really better designed to sort of slash, grab, rip, and then run away. The forensic evidence painted an intriguing picture of how the melee started. Driven by thirst, a stegosaurus and its baby have moved out onto the lake bed to drink. Their compact feet slip easily through the hardened upper crust, and they become mired in mud. They are now an easy target. Attracted by the sounds of the struggling pair, a single ceratosaurus arrives on the scene. Its long toes and splayed foot design allow it to move across the upper crust without breaking through. Its target, the juvenile. The juvenile is basically helpless. It, it normally relies on its mother to be able to protect it but she's stuck up to her shoulders in mud so she can't use her main weapon, which is her spiked tail. Like its mother, the little juvenile has spikes, but he can't move them because he's literally exhausted from trying to get out of the mud. The Ceratosaurus moves in for the kill. He bites the juvenile in one of its most vulnerable areas, behind the ribcage, directly in front of her hind legs. The mother looks on helplessly as the Ceratosaurus tears open a large gash in the juvenile's flank. We now know that by the late Jurassic, Ceratosaurus was fast becoming extinct, desperate for easy prey. The discovery of a Ceratosaurus skeleton made it clear that it hunted the lake bed for food. But there was a piece of the puzzle that experts couldn't answer. A 
of the tens of thousands of fossil remains, only a single Ceratosaurus was found. This mid-sized predator did not have the power or the weaponry to cause the extreme damage to the tens of thousands of bones. So, what had happened? The answer? Another killer, even bigger, was keeping them away. The theory, as it turned out, would gain momentum with the discovery of a fourth set of remains. And this one was a much larger, more lethal predator. Allosaurus. Allosaurus was the most common dinosaur found in the Cleveland Lloyd site. It's a massive animal, so it was more than capable of crushing bones and ripping apart the skeleton. Allosaurus was the first giant predatory dinosaur to stalk North America. It predates T. rex by some 80 million years and was the biggest carnivore of its time. When the first big skeletons of Allosaurus were uncovered, people finally saw that there were meat-eating dinosaurs that were as big as a killer whale uh, with powerful claws on its head, truly fearsome meat-eaters, a terror from the Jurassic period. Of the thousands of bones excavated at the prehistoric lake, two-thirds of them are from Allosaurus. It stood about 16 feet tall, measured 38 feet in length, and weighed up to four tons. In addition to its size, Allosaurus possessed two lethal weapons that made it a top predator. The first was its trio of six-inch claws extending from each hand. The claws of Allosaurus would have been like an eagle on steroids. They're long, they're curved, they're actually very similar to eagle claws in shape, but backed by huge muscles. Allosaurus's second lethal weapon was its combination of powerful jaw muscles and serrated teeth, two to four inches long. The teeth of Allosaurus were not like T-Rex. They weren't bone-crushing, but they seemed to be more blade-like. They're more slashing teeth. And that's probably more of what it was doing when it attacked him, was making a slash, not holding on, trying to bleed it. And in some ways, that's the way sharks actually attack. They go up and they'll bite something and bleed it and allow that to move in the end. But the dinosaur investigators then had to wonder if the teeth of Allosaurus were not capable of crushing bone, then why did the dinosaurs found in the watering hole show signs of being crushed? The answer? 8,000 pounds of Allosaurus actually stomped on them. This was the site of one of the most gruesome and barbaric acts ever recorded in the fossil record. The bodies were piled on top of each other and the earth literally ran red with blood. In order to keep from sinking into the mud, I think the Allosauruses were actually standing on their victims while they ripped them apart. And that's why so many of the bones were crushed and broken. But if Allosaurus was the apex predator, why then were so many Allosaurus bones found in the lake bed? Investigators believe that while feeding, many of them became stuck themselves. But one question remained. Why would so many Allosaurus gather in the same place at the same time? Interesting that with Allosaurus, we find, in some cases, large accumulations of Allosaurus bone. And so when we see large accumulations, it makes us wonder what's going on. Did these animals live in large uh, groups? We might even call them flocks, considering they're closely related to birds. Or were they together for some other reason? An interesting parallel that, that is, is compelling in many ways is what we see at the La Brea Tar Pit in California. Many of the fossils that we find there are of predatory animals, of wolves and predatory birds and things like that. The La Brea Tar Pits we regard as a baited trap. Animals get stuck in there and the predators are lured in. Hundreds of Allosaurus skeletons, but only a single Ceratosaurus.